take me to your leader. So we're getting a new show starting this week and an old one ending. And I'll say first of all, I'm posting these reviews in the order that I watched the show, so it's going to be Strange New Worlds first, and then Picard later on today. But one thing I'm going to say guys is don't watch them in that order, watch them the other way about, watch Picard, get the finale out of the way, and then jump into Strange New Worlds. I'll explain why I think that in my Picard video. But seriously, get the taste of Picard out your mouth before you jump into the savoury flavour of Strange New Worlds. So spoilers if you haven't seen it. My name's Al, this is the Geek In Review, and I'm going to be talking about Star Trek Strange New Worlds Episode 1. Yeah, straight away from the get-go, that was a hard-titled intro, so they're really going to sell the Trek brand on this. One voiceover from the trailer, and we see some aliens making first contact with a Starfleet ship. Which, I can't remember the model of the ship, but I'm sure it's from one of the online games or the FASA games back in the 70s and 80s. People are probably going to mention it on Twitter or in the comments below, but if you know what model of ship it was or what model it was based on, let me know. And then we cut to Pike in Montana, and again, this is more stuff that we've seen from the trailers, but he's not alone. He's got a woman with him that's another Starfleet captain, and he's watching the day the Earth stood still. And he's got his whole rugged look going on, and with Pike, as always, it works. But who is this woman? Are we going to get any backstory on that? Are they making him a bit of a Kirk in this before Kirk? I'll get to that in a second. And we find out that the Enterprise is in space dock getting routine maintenance, so the crew are just generally sort of doing what they want to do. Pike really does come off as this guy that's running away from something, and we all know what that is, and it does get deeper in this episode into it. He knows he dies, and that's probably the reason that he's left Starfleet. In fact, he pretty much says so a few times throughout the course of the episode. And there's a few nods to discover. We really want to know what's going on with this relationship and is it going to get followed up at all in the season. Then Anson Mount does his hell on wheel things but with a horse in the middle of the snow. And Admiral April shows up who, from the animated series, you all know that, it was leaked last week, recruits them to go back to Starfleet early to search for this mission ship. And it turns out that number one was the captain on board. So he pushes the Enterprise into leaving space stop. And they do mention a few times that the ship hasn't completed repairs and a few systems were down. It doesn't really tie into anything in this episode that I can see on a first viewing. I'm going to go back and watch it a few more times. Is this something that's going to happen later on? Or maybe are they trying to explain what happened to the Enterprise and Discovery? Because we never really got any answers there. It's just odd that they mention this a few times and there's no real follow up. But this is all just the intro and it's a great setup. They tied up where they needed to with Disco pretty much straight away. And it's great solid opening titles, again those were leaked last week so you've probably seen them, but it is different when you see it on the big full screen in context of the episode, it really did work for me. But it also picks up with Spock pretty much straight away on Vulcan, as I said the crew are pretty much on downtime. And while we've got a lot of hype for all these new characters that I'm going to get to later on in the video, I've sort of forgot about Spock and all this mix. He's probably the character in the show that I'm least interested in because we already know so much about him. But anyway, he gets engaged and he gets married and she asks him to get married and man oh man is that going to give the Phantom Menace some clicks and likes. But anyway, and I don't know why this is a story but then it occurred to me, again because we know so much about Spock, they've got to fill in these gaps and create these aspects of him that we've never seen so it's got to be more personal, it can't be anything really huge because we already know about the cyborg thing that's going to happen in the future and we already know about the Michael Burnham thing but yeah Spock's married and it's just never got mentioned before so Pike calls him to get the band back together and then we get a great little sort of classic Star Trek delivery of the captain going to the ship with Pike on the shuttle and it really did feel like space here in that bit in Star Trek 2 when Kirk goes to the Enterprise and again I think they do it in uh, Star Trek 5 The Final Frontier as well but maybe a little heavy handed on the easter eggs the shuttle's called Stamets and that's probably my first sigh of the episode here and I'm sure they mentioned the USS Yelchin as well which was a nice nod but really Stamets is the shuttle who cares I like to see Pike mentioned that he knows a young Lieutenant Kirk and that's exactly what he does. So Pike and him appear to have some sort of relationship and it, it sort of ends with discussions between the Lieutenant Leanne and Pike at one. 
And we also got glimpses of the other characters, you know, Uhura, we know where she's going, but Ortega is as well. I really liked her and I want to see what she's doing. She was in the captain's chair and, yeah, I liked her. I wasn't sure how it was going to feel, but she was pretty much solid. And one thing this show is establishing in the opening episodes is these... One thing that this show is establishing in the first episode is that the crew are characters and they're going to get developed. They're not just Detmer and Owo. We get the doctor, we get the nurse, we get the transport or chief as well. So we're going to have some great recurring characters on here. My only sort of complaint was, again, the whole humour thing with Nurse Chapel. That wasn't really my vibe. And I think they might just use her as a sort of comedy thing throughout the season. But as always, we're going to have to wait and see. But the episode had a great pace and it's an exciting introduction to the show. And let's be honest, this show has had a lot of hype. We've been waiting on it for ages and it had a huge weight on its shoulders. And it's early days, but for me it delivered and it did really feel like solid Trek. I got a great sense of the world in space, felt like space again like it did from in the original movies. And as I said, it's an early start but it's a very promising start and there's no doubt this is going to be the new flagship show of Star Trek. Picard's coming to an end with only one season left and Disco's going on to season 5. So this is going to be the new prize horse ladies and gentlemen. But yeah, I'm looking forward to more episodes. I hope there's not too much more of the zany action, but we're definitely going to get that. And if that's my worst complaint in the thing about the ship as well, I'd say that's a pretty solidly good episode. And compared and compared to the finale of Picard, this is an absolute masterpiece. I'm going to be dropping my Picard video later on today, so make sure you watch that. And if you've made it this far, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And I really want to know what you think about Star Trek Strange New Worlds, so let me know in the comments below, or you can follow me on Twitter at TheGeeksReviews. My name's Al, thanks for watching.